Right then, three, two, one, and we're back. Um, hope you're enjoying the lesson so far. Um, like I've said in previous videos, if you're using something else or you are doing something different to what I'm doing, that's fine at this stage. Um, but these are here and these lessons will be going through some of the stuff that we would be doing in school around about now. Um, these are great. You can pick these up when you want to. You don't have to do this today. You can do it tomorrow. You can do some of it today, some of it tomorrow. It's completely up to you. Anyway, let me just check all the systems are working. I think they are. Um, and we're on to the second lesson of this little literacy unit of nonfiction. Um, so hopefully you had a look at some of your books and you've gathered together um, some of the nonfiction books that you have in your home. Hopefully you found many different types of books, not just information text, not just uh, text about facts, but maybe you found some newspapers, some magazines, um, maybe you found a fiction book that was based on real life. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll move on and we'll look at some of the strategies that we use when we are reading nonfiction. Um, so yeah, we've got, remember what nonfiction is, it's that text that's about real life events, or it's real places, real people, real things. And the purpose of nonfiction is to either inform, to give information, to teach you something, to explain. And we also said last lesson to, to entertain as well. Sometimes it is entertaining to have uh, facts thrown in your face. Um, so we're going to look at these strategies that we use when we're reading. So just like in maths, when we do uh, mental equations, sums in our head, there are thought processes going on in our head to maybe to add two numbers for example if I'm doing seven add six well I'm thinking well let's make the next ten seven add three is ten and then I've got three more left over from the six those kind of thought processes in maths they happen in literacy as well we're reading we just need to uh, show them and we need to tell you what they are so that's what I mean when I say read aloud think aloud so when you're reading you're thinking as well and there are some techniques that we use some different types hopefully you found as well at your home, autobiographies and biographies, books about real life people, essays, so if you've been asked to write just an essay on a topic, um, uh, a speech, a diary, newspaper stories and magazines. So you put a bit of recap. Features of non-fiction text. What did we say were some of the features? Go back to your grid that we did yesterday. What were some of the features that we had? Um, so obviously we know that they're about real, real life. But they're not made up. Um, we know that there are diagrams. It is tricky to write on there, I might just type going forward. Um, we know that the good thing about nonfiction is that you don't have to read, you can read in any order. You can find the pages that are appropriate to what you want to find out and just read that section. You don't need to read the whole thing at once, you don't need to read the whole thing to understand the text. The text can be read in isolation. It can be read in any order. Um, we know that it's got to inform or explain something. We know that there are sections. So it's headings and subheadings. That'll see bullet point sections or different um, layout techniques. And there are some obvious key features like a contents page, an 
decks the back and the glossary. Oh dear, gloss. To help you with the key, um, the VIP words. Good, well done, you remembered some of the key features there. Um, they will help you look at text and realise whether they're fiction or non-fiction. So today we're going to practice some of the strategies for reading non-fiction. We have looked at these in other um, reading books that we have read. We'll just remind ourselves of what they are and how we do them when we're reading the different texts. So we've got using our background knowledge, we've got making predictions, asking questions, we've got VIP words and phrases, and we've got that spotting meaning and breakdown. So if we're ever reading something we don't quite understand what it says, what can we do um, about trying to understand it rather than just carrying on reading the text. Super. Um, so first of all, have a little think about what background knowledge is and explain why it's important. Have a little think for yourself, maybe write some bullet points down. Little notes. Why why do you think background knowledge is important or how can we use our background knowledge? Give you some time. <clears throat> Pardon me. Lost my voice. I'll give you some time to answer that. So for me, reasons why your background knowledge is important because you may have already read something, you may already have knowledge in your head, you may already have experiences of what you're reading about. For example, uh, we're going to um, do some topic about the Vikings and you may have been to a museum where they had a Viking relic, a Viking object. You may have read um, the bit of text about that. So you've already, you already know something prior to reading the text that you, you're about to read. And you can use that knowledge, it doesn't have to go anywhere. Um, the same when we know our, we know our number facts in maths, they don't, we don't have to keep adding um, six and seven because once we've remembered it, it stays in our head. Once we've remembered something from a text, it helps us, um, we can use our background knowledge, the things that we already know, to, to help us with more understanding. So, for example, here, if you were to pick up this book here, this big book about dinosaurs, is obviously non-fiction. Um, without even opening this book, without even having a look at it, just by looking at the front cover, there are, there are already things that we know, aren't there? You might know some names of some dinosaurs. You might know the periods in which the dinosaurs lived. You might know different features of dinosaurs. You might know why the dinosaurs were extinct. You might know that some dinosaurs are carnivores or omnivores. But already you know lots of different facts about the dinosaurs that will help your understanding. And you know, you've already come into contact with some of the key vocab and the key words um, that you'll see when you hopefully, if you were to read this book. There are challenge if you can think of some questions that could be asked already then. So use your background knowledge to maybe think of if you were writing a question about dinosaurs, what could you ask? Um, you could say what type of, um, what type of animals the dinosaurs originate from? I'd be using some of my background knowledge. I know that dinosaurs, um, that reptiles are uh, the, uh, Dinosaurs came from reptiles that are most closely related to reptiles and birds. That could be a question that you could ask. So you could try and think about what other background knowledge you already have about this book because there's a dinosaur book you're reading. You could pick up any of your non-fiction books that you found and see what you already know before you've even read them. Again, some, get some of your background knowledge already. That's what we'd be doing in class. This next one, make predictions and wonder. So we did say that you don't have to read the book in any order. A non-fiction text can be read in any order. So imagine I've got this book here and I've turned to this page. It's obviously about sharks and there's loads of things 
that we could discuss here. So obviously these, I'm thinking, why are all these different sharks have different appearances? This has obviously had the head shaped like this. We've got speckly spots on this shark here. That's a bit about the different size fins. Why is that important? Why are are sharks dangerous? This obviously looks, they look quite dangerous here. Are they, are they dangerous? I'm wondering a predatory fish, what does that mean? Um, do they eat fish? Do fish eat sharks? These are the kind of questions that we want to um, think about in our heads to try and make us excited about what we're about to read so we can um, find all the relevant information that we want to. I'm just having a look at the text now and seeing if there's anything that I would wonder and predict anything else. So the largest hammerhead shark, why is it a, why is it a hammerhead? Is it just a shape or does it use? It is a hammer. Largest fish, are there any other fish that are larger than the shark? What kind of teeth do the sharks have? See, but then we come to one of the most important parts of nonfiction is our VIP words. So obviously learning new words is important for our everyday life. However, um, Nora's just back. Um, Non-fiction books like to use lots of posh words because they're talking about specific things and there are sometimes really specific words that are linked to those um, ideas. So I think for the next slide, yes, I've got the text here and you can read it with me and we can maybe highlight any words that we think are really important, any topic words. So you can read it with me and maybe you can highlight as well as we go. Your pet deserves the best foods possible, so look after your live foods. Keep your crickets and lotus, locusts, they're types of um, insects, fresh and plump and full of vitamins. Okay, we've got vitamins there, that's a VIP word, we've got to give them uh, whatever we're Whatever this animal that we're reading has to eat live insects, and we've got to give them vitamins. Vegetation, what could that word mean? Feeding them with bug grub and fresh vegetation. Veg, this looks a bit like veg, so vegetation is a posh word for veg. Don't allow your live food to dehydrate. Uh, hydrate is related to water, and hydration is keeping. Um, if you don't have water, you become dehydrated. Hydrate the live food with bug gel. No, are we okay? Yeah. Playing with, on the grass. Oh. 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 She slept for about. So now what you want to do? Are there? Oh. You have a full bottle of the swallow in the chicken. Yep, so we're reading through this and we're highlighting any. VIP words, not just words that you don't understand, they're words that are important and they, they're words that um, are related to the text. So we've got vitamins, vegetation, dehydrate, um, hydrate the live food with bug gel, might be a phrase, what is bug gel? Keep them alive longer and mouth watering, wateringly juicy. Care for your live food in their own enclosure where they live, uh, such as a cricket keeper. Live food should be coated, coated in Nutribal. 
to ensure the water dragon is getting the best nutrition possible. Uh, we'll have to find out what that means. It's a bit of a breakdown, we'll go to that later. Nutrition, that's uh, all your food. Chinese water dragons, as their name suggests, are tropical reptiles. So reptiles are a type of animal and tropical is a part um, of the world where it's quite hot and humid, rainforests. Um, this can be achieved by using a large deep water bowl or you could incorporate a filtered aquarium. Filters to keep a clean aquarium is uh, a water bottle. That's it. Hopefully, you can hear me over Nora. Um, Chinese water dragons also require a humid environment. It is therefore important to mist the vivarium once daily using a water sprayer. Without this humidity, that's how much moisture, how much water is in the air, your dragon could consequently become dehydrated and lead to acidosis. If you've got too much acid, a type of chemical in your body, you can have kidney failure, an organ. So obviously, we really know it's very important to keep um, your vessel for looking after this water dragon um, with lots of moisture and keep it moist so it doesn't get dehydrated. So that's how I would read that and how I'd highlight some of the VIP words that the text would use out there, the words that are related specifically to um, the water dragon and the hydration of the water dragon. You've got a couple of key words like Nutribel, uh, Aquarium, Vivarium. These are only words that you'll hear and see when you're talking about these types of things. Spot meaning and breakdown. So some things that you can try when you're reading. It says here breakdowns can occur frequently when reading nonfiction, as there's usually lots of specific language and vocabulary, lots of intricate and what we call jargon words that are very posh and you might not understand them all. So what can we do if we come across a sentence or a word that we don't understand? You can go back a couple of sentences and reread it and collect all the little clues that you can see. So I to connect the hard parts that came before, use the background knowledge that you've already discussed, and just think like a detective. Can you find out any of the words that you do know? What do they mean? Can you put them together? Can you piece it together? If you go back to this bit, it says live food should be coated in neutral. Well, I know what coated means. You put things on. It's talking about the bugs, um, and it's obviously they've got to have some sort of special nutrition and some special requirements so this must be a, a special type of food maybe or something that you've got to add to the live food to make sure that they're um, healthy and good enough for your water dragon to eat um, another thing try and make pictures in your mind try and create an image of what's happening so you've got this um, water dragon's got to eat this live food and the live food must be kept somewhere we've got to feed it all the right things to make sure it's got all the right nutrition maybe if you picture it in your head maybe that might help you um, you can look at the keyword in the sentence and help you understand so I the keyword there coated I know that that means to put something on top of something so would I coat the bug in some paint? Probably not. Would I coat it in a special sauce, like you would coat your food in a special sauce? I think I probably would. Um, super. Another thing that I saw, so spot meaning a bit, and this is a, uh, a journal article. Something something very intricate and formal this is beyond primary school this is like um, what you see at university these are the top scientists the top biologists will read these types of non-fiction texts they're called journal articles and it's titled a new genus of species of longless salamander family plethophodi from the Packland Highlands of the South Eastern United States. Now, just in the title, there's so much there that I don't understand. But I can maybe use some of the keywords that I do know to try and understand what this text might be about. So, new genus. I'm quite sure, something new. 
Maybe they found something new, a species that might be a type of animal. Lungless, well, not the lungs are there in the body to breathe, and the salamander is a type of animal. Okay, it's making sense now. Maybe they found a new salamander that's got no lungs. And this will be a text that tells um, the reader all about the scientist finding um, a new type of salamander. I'll put the link in the uh, in the email when I send you this video. I don't expect you to understand this, but maybe you could find things that you don't understand. See if you work out some sentences and what they mean. So then your task will be is to read the whole text of Water Dragons and to make notes of these things as you're reading it. So in a moment we'll go to the slides where the text is and then in your book or your paper you can make a little subheading of background origin then. as you're reading it or as you're reading the titles maybe make some notes about what background knowledge you have. I was just looking at the front cover I'd Notice that it's a reptile, it looks a bit like a chameleon or an iguana or a lizard. Um, I noticed that it's probably about, uh, I might know some information already about how to look after these types of pets. I'll write that down. Make some predictions. So you might think about what, how do they live, what do they eat? What temperature does their house need to be? Are there any specific things that they can't eat or they can't do? Highlight all those VIP words or make another list of some key vocabulary that you can find. And then any um, sentences or places where you don't understand, you've got some breakdown. Try and use those skills that we talked about to maybe understand what they're talking about. So I'll go to the text and I'll let you guys have a read and then you can have, I think that's the end of that lesson, you guys can have a go at reading this text and using these read aloud strategies that we've discussed this lesson. Let's go to the text and you guys can just pause this as you see fit in order to read at your own pace. So this is the front cover, how to keep your water dragon. Housing. You can pause this, remember, and just read it in your own time. Graph here. And pause or go back if you want to reread it, absolutely fine. is just supposed to be round here. Not a picture you can present your work in different ways using bullet points or different text boxes. Again, any words that you come across that you might not um, know, like UBB Life, you could always use Google or the internet to assist you and that will help you. If you know what UVB light is, it might help you with your understanding. Just pause it. So good thing to notice that this text does have a glossary. So these are some of the keywords that you might have highlighted already when you're looking at your VIP words list. 
So then you can well, it's already talked about what that is in the glossary. A bit of it in the mirror, like we guessed it would be. Top secret. And that will be the end of today's lesson. Go back, read through the text, and make a list of some background knowledge, make a list of some predictions that you might have some questions you might have as a result of reading it, sort of those VIP words, or maybe go through the glossary and look at those um, VIP words and the meaning of them and see if you can use the meaning of the VIP words to help you with any breakdown that you might have, because I can assume, I can guess that most of your breakdown will be because you don't understand what the words mean and the books very kindly explain some of those meanings for you. Um, yeah, off you go and have a go at that and I will see you next time.